<sighs> That's my blood. That's my blood. It's a lot of my blood. <sighs> Buy me a drink, sailor. Harry Flynn? Hey! What the hell are you doing here? I'm looking for you, mate. Uh-oh. Should I be flattered or worried? Maybe a bit of both. <laughs> Come here. I've got a job for us. Really? A client is willing to part with a huge sum of cash if we acquire a certain object for him. All right, I'm listening. Now, you're not gonna like this. Oh, no. 
No, you're out of your mind. Yeah, you just, just hear me out no. in a second. Flynn, we both know two people who were killed trying to lift something out of this and place. And one who made it out. Yeah, barely. I can't do this without you, Drake. You're the only one who's cracked it, and you know better than anyone it's a two-person job. No, no, no. Three, actually. Right. And speak of the devil, here she comes now. What? Chloe Fraser. Nate. Drake. Nathan. Drake. Hello, Harry. Chloe here's one of the best drivers in the business. She'll take good care of us. I bet. Right, look. I've got it all figured out. We go in through the sewer. I'm loving it so far. That puts us in the courtyard. From there, we scale up the wall, run across the rooftops, and just drop down into the exhibit hall. Bob's your uncle. And what is worth all this trouble, I hear you ask? I didn't, but go ahead. But that's it. An oil lamp. Yeah. <laughs> it's worthless. I don't get it. Neither do we. That's why we tracked you down. Well, it sounds like you're working for a nutcase. Hmm. Some collector who's got too much time and money on his hands. And by the way, this is not worth any of it. But there's more. How's your 13th century Latin, mate? Where'd you get this? Borrowed it from the files of the nutcase. Mm -hmm. In Trebizond, we were set upon by thieves. Father, Maffeo, and I were robbed of our greatest treasures. This was written by Marco Polo. Yes, that much we were able to work out. Unfortunately, the rest of it's nonsense. Hey, hold on. So that it should not fall into the wrong hands, I concealed my great sorrow in the unlikeliest place. The light of the great Khan shelters the fate of the Thirteen. See what I mean? It's just gibberish. He's talking about the Lost Fleet. Yeah. I know, someone want to fill me in? Marco Polo leaves China with 600 passengers and 14 ships loaded down with treasure from Kublai Khan. And he lands in Persia a year and a half later with only one ship left and only 18 passengers. Now he recorded every detail of his journey, but he never told what happened to all those ships and the passengers. So, so somewhere out there, there are 13 ships loaded with the Emperor's treasure waiting to be found. Yeah, and that is what your client is after. Hey, look at this lamp. It's covered in Mongolian script. It must have been a gift from Kublai Khan. The light of the great Khan shelters the, the fate of the, of the 13. 13. Marco Polo hid something inside this lamp. Something that pinpoints the site of the Lost Fleet. So, we're dicking this guy over, right? Damn Absolutely. straight. Absolutely. <laughs> you in then? What the hell? I mean, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs>
course it's locked. It's always locked. Karma's a bitch. Hello. Uh, <clears throat> well, so much for foreplay. You mind telling me what the hell is going on? You mean with Flynn? Yeah, you might have warned me. And missed the look on your face? Anyway, you haven't exactly made yourself easy to find. Talk about making yourself easy. Oh, you're not jealous. Let's not forget who walked out on whom. After all, you don't get to be jealous. <laughs> Wait a minute, Claudia. If it makes you feel any better, my relationship with Flynn is strictly professional. Really? Mostly professional. Oh. When I figured out he was actually on to something, I thought you'd want to be in on the action. So what's the plan? Just like we said, we pull the heist. We find the ships and we make off with the treasure. With Flynn? Mm-hmm. And then? And then we split the take three ways and you and I just disappear. Together, this time. 
I see. Until then, he can't know about us. He's gonna be pissed. He's gonna be fine. <clears throat> Trust me. Sure you're up for this. I'd feel a lot better if I had a gun. We won't need them. A little insurance, that's all. <sighs> Flynn, they're just museum guards. And we have their patrols all mapped out. Relax. Relax. <laughs> Relax. Have you ever been in a Turkish prison, mate? If we get caught, they will lock us up and throw away the sodding key. You do realize that, don't you? <laughs> better than you do. Well, you may fancy that kind of thing, but I don't. <laughs> Can't afford to make any mistakes. Yeah, and we won't. We're here. This way. So what do we do if they switch the patrols? Figure it out as we go. We cannot fumble our way through this. I don't fumble, I improvise. Oh, is that what you call it? Yeah, I'm uh, adaptable. Adaptable? You cocky bastard. <laughs> there. What did I tell you? That passage there is gonna take us right under the museum. <laughs> you called it all right. You need to have a little more faith in me, chum. <laughs> okay, this one here is me. All right, remember, that tower is our only way into the exhibit. But we can't even get close with those floodlights on. We've gone over this. Just make sure you cut the power by the time we reach the second courtyard. The lights will be out. I'll have the van waiting at the rendezvous point. Just make sure you get your asses out of there in time. Fair enough. All right, enough chat. Let's do this. Chloe. 
see you on the other side. Looking forward to it. You sure you know where you're going? Don't I always? Don't you love the way the water makes your jeans all squidgy? It's like the good old days, isn't it? Yeah. When were those again? Oh, wait. This can't be right. You must have made a wrong turn somewhere. <laughs> hey, now what do you bet that will take us Like Flint. I don't get it. Just give me a boost. Here it comes. Thanks. Almost there. You ready? No guts, no glory. Here we go. We're good. Reach up there and grab the ladder. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I dropped it down for you. This is the way to the courtyard. Well, we're not going this way. Not if you want to keep your skin. All right. There's got to be a shutoff valve around here somewhere. See if you can find it then. You got it!
Okay. Now there should be a door just around this corner. That's our access point. Once we're through, just stick to the plan. You got me? Tell me you didn't miss this. <laughs> I'm here, aren't I? locked. Good job I came prepared. <laughs> I pick more than my nose, my friend. Oh, wait! There's an alarm. Oh, that's nuisance last time. Ah, great. Now what? Well, I can disarm it if we can find the junction box. It's got to be around here somewhere. There. That ought to do it. All right, we're in. Shit. I got him. get to it from the roof and we can't get to the roof from here. We're gonna have to make our way to the next courtyard, through that gate over there. Well, let's do it. We've got to get up to that balcony. We can climb the gate over here. Got it. Bazen o kadar canım sıkılıyor ki uyanık kalmakta zorluk çekiyorum.
Senin burada olmaman lazım. Should be able to lift this up, sneak right under. Whoa, whoa, not so fast. There's another alarm. Ah, oh, great. You want to get this one? Wait here. this courtyard to get onto the roof. Okay, I'll just let you do all the ass kicking, all right? Right. Head to the fountain. dreams. Transfer olmamış mıydı? Now we just gotta find a way up to that window. Which window? There's a lot of bloody windows. Now what? It's time to tip the odds back in our favor. Oh, that's brilliant. Guns? What are you thinking? Relax, Gandhi. They're tranquilizer guns. Totally non-lethal. Your conscience will remain unscathed. Oh, well, good idea. Great. Okay, a bit of advice. These things have lousy range, so we still have to get in close. You okay with that? Know how to shoot a gun, genius. All right. All right, let's take these guys out. 
when the Chaitripki began to dodge over. Maya Chalushma. We gotta get up to that walkway. This could help. Okay, for something with wheels, this is very heavy. There, that'll work. Now all we need is a horse. Those rafters will get us onto the roof, if we can get up there. Good thing one of us thought ahead, eh? Yeah. All yours. Hey, hey, lad, you got it. All right, there's the tower. Getting closer. Appreciate that update, Captain Obvious. Might 
behind you. As always. Great view. I can see your house. Let's get moving. Can't get any closer with the tower lit up like that. What the hell's she doing? Come on, Chloe. <laughs> That's my girl. Ladies first. Ah, <laughs> cute. Here we go. Ah, <laughs> oh, there he 
it is. Yeah, and there's the acoustic alarm. Until we get this case unlocked, that thing's gonna go off if we so much as touch this glass. No worries, mate. Voila. <laughs> Now we're sure it's the right one. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. Sorry, Marco. <laughs> Crap. Well, that's the understatement of the year. This is it. It's bloody useless. The light of the Great Khan. Wait a minute. What are you doing? It's resin. It'll burn. And? Just give me your lighter. What? Is that really a good idea in here? And... Whoa. Let me see that. Our ships were driven by a great flood tide into the wilds of Java. Sounds like they were hit by a tsunami. Yeah, somewhere off the west coast of Borneo. Oh, great. That narrows it down a bit. Uh, look, this mountain must have been the closest landmark where they went aground. We find that mountain. We find the ships. Yeah, good work, mate. Uh, wait, wait, there's more. Okay, Joe. As if the ocean itself sought to throw off the terrible cargo we carried from Shambhala. The curse of the Chintamani. Would that mean something to you? Shambhala? Oh my god, Flynn! What? Marco Polo found Shambhala! Shangri-La! You're joking. If they were carrying the Chintamani stone, it might still be there. It's all very fascinating, but we really gotta go. Yeah, I'm right behind you. What the hell are you doing? Sorry, mate. This is where we part ways. Wait, Flynn, we had a plan. No, you had a plan. Turns out I've got one of my own. Uh, come on, throw me the rope. Don't be stupid. Oh, yeah, right. You're the mastermind. Only you overlooked one little detail. Didn't you, partner? So what are you going to do, shoot me now? No, I just need you out of the way for a little while. Oh, shit. You think I didn't know about the ships from the beginning? Any schoolboy could have figured that out. Flynn, listen. Face it, genius. You've been played. Ah, <laughs> uh -uh, not yet. I want to give the guards a decent head start. Right, that's my cue. No hard feelings, yeah? Flynn. Okay, now I'm screwed. Alright, alright. Oh, think, Nate, think. Yeah, there it is. Get out of here. There we go. There we go. 
Suckers. You overlooked one little detail, didn't you, partner? What? Face it, genius, you've been played. Oh, really? Hey, hey, hey! Jackass, you're ruining the show here. Ah, oh, what a shame. Sully! I really can't leave you alone for a minute. Oh, man, am I glad to see you. How you doing, kid? Uh, I'm doing just great. So, had to grease a few palms. Did go through the rest of your money, and a good chunk of my own, but hey! Ah. Jesus, you stink! Yeah, not half as bad as that cigar. Yeah. Hey, how'd you find me? Well, uh, friend of yours asked for my help. Hello, Nate. Oh, no. No. Now, wait a second. Sully, kick her out and shut the door. We're safer in here. Just wait a goddamn minute. Hear her out. Thank you, Victor. Hey, no offense, Sully, but you're not exactly the best judge of character, especially when it comes to women. Fair enough. All the same. Dear God. Oh, no, it's not that bad. Look, I have my own bucket. Mm. Last cell I was in, eight of us had to share. Listen, Nate. You know something I really appreciate you dropping by? But if you and Flynn hadn't screwed me over in the first no, place, I wouldn't have been rotting in this shithole Listen, for the last three Nate. months. So excuse me if I'm not just, you know, leaping into your arms. I had nothing to do with it. Right. I told you, he's not gonna listen to me. Screw this. Nate, they found the ships. In Borneo. Yes. And the Chintamani stone? How do you know about that? Do you really think Flynn could have figured that out on his own? All right, good point. No, they haven't found it yet. What do you mean, they? Flynn and his client, Lazarevich. You know, the nutcase. They've been working together all along. All right, then. If they haven't found the stone, that means there's still time. You're going to get us into that dig site. We are going to snatch that treasure right out from under them. They'll never see it coming. Yeah, well, payback's a bitch. Look, they called it the wish-fulfilling jewel. It's a sacred object. What, like a Buddhist holy grail? Exactly. Thanks. Sully, listen to this. In the kingdom of Shambhala lies the most precious thing to be found in all the world. A perfect raw sapphire of the deepest blue, larger around than the reach of a man's arms. Ooh, that's gotta be worth millions. Hundreds of millions. And you say there's more of this? Loads more. Lazarevich paid top dollar for Marco Polo's journals. He's been after the Chintamani stone for years. <laughs> well, if he's been counting on Flynn to find it for him, it's no wonder he hasn't had any luck. <laughs> if I can get a look at Lazarevich's files, I can find that stone. Uh, hang on a minute, cowboy. That's easier said than done. The files are in his tent, and his tent is in the middle of the camp. It's like an armed compound. There are soldiers everywhere. Well, that's why it has to be a inside job from someone they know and trust oh okay i see where this is going I just need a diversion you give me five minutes in that tent that's all it'll take really five minutes well that's great i won't even have to get my top off chloe i was thinking more like an explosion or that can be arranged are you in oh hell yes i was in before you were Chloe, you're reading us? Loud and clear. We're getting close. OK, I've planted charges all around the perimeter of the camp. You two just need to arm them. The first one should be right ahead of you.
Here it is. I also left the detonator for you. Uh-huh. There we are. All right. First one set. Don't touch the button. This one? <laughs> Once you've set all the charges, just hit the detonator and it's showtime. Just be careful. Zarovich has got his men posted all around the perimeter. Sweating like a hooker in church. You brought a hooker to church? Why not? Don't let him spot you. Let's take these guys out. Quietly. I said quiet, mate. That's the other end of loud. You oh, hit like a girl. Him out. Incoming! Looks like we can swing across there. <laughs> Maybe you can. All right, hold on, Grandpa. See if I can find another way up.
Thanks, kid. This way. Nate, you should be approaching excavation site one by now. They should have been back by now. Shit, we've been spotted. Take them out fast. We can't let them go back to town. Give up. Here's the camp. Remember who you're talking you ready about? for this? Let's do it. Scoured all the wrecks. What else does he expect to find? Don't let Lazarevich hear you talking like that. Get your hands up!
some of this. explosives and get them on. We still got to arm three of the charges. Come on, kid, quit screwing around. We haven't armed all the charges yet. There should be only two left. Can't reach us. Come on over here. I'll give you a boost. All right. Come on, gorgeous. Jump up. Yep. Uh, uh, you got a great ass, Sully. Uh, thanks. There you go, kid. All right. Must have been some tsunami to wash these ships so far inland. Looks deserted. Get down! The pump is down again. Uh, the damn thing is always breaking down. Come on, let's just fix it so we can get out of here. Look, they're not armed. That many. What are we waiting for? We can take these guys. I don't know, Sully. Maybe. Please. I will kick you to sleep. some help down here. Yeah, you were doing fine. Then, uh, yeah. Uh, here's another one for you. Sully! Enough of this frivolity, kid. Come on, we got work to do. What does frivolity mean? That we follow the hose, we find the camp. You always follow the hose. Just like in Montreal, huh? You're never gonna forget
think I see the camp up ahead. Okay, you ready? Wait, wait, just hold on a sec. Three months and you have found nothing. Well, 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 now, wait wait a minute. We've been... Commander! That must be Lazarevich. This man was caught stealing artifacts from site number five. <laughs> you would betray me for this? No, no, Zoran, I can't explain. No, no need, no need. <laughs> I'm surrounded by traitors and fools! What do you say we really ruined this guy's day? Do it. Run out! Search the perimeter! Go! All right, it's all yours, kid. I'll cover you from here. Enough of this shit. Shut up, would you? I'm sick of your complaining. Oh, that had to hurt. Lazarevich guy isn't screwing around, Sully. You should see all this stuff. He's got files on every expedition to find Shambhala. All the way back to the 1600s. What about Marco Polo's journals? <laughs> Here they are. Just hurry it up. You haven't got much time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The worthy pilgrim is granted a golden passport to conquer obstacles on his journey to Shambhala. Huh. Is that supposed to mean something? Beats me. Hold on. Here we go. It was with great sorrow that I left my fellow travelers to their fate. A fate decreed by the dreadful cargo we bore from Shambhala. You must have thought that tsunami was some kind of divine retribution. Wait a minute. Damn. Sully, I don't think the Chintamani stone is here. What? Listen to this. I, I would have sooner endured the wrath of Kublai Khan himself than remove the Chintamani stone from that sacred shrine. Marco Polo never had the stone. Then what dreadful cargo was he talking about? I don't know. Well, if the stone's not here, what the hell is Lazarovich looking for? Shambhala. Here in Borneo? He's a little wide of the mark, don't you think? He must be trying to pick up Marco Polo's trail. Back to Shambhala. Why? <laughs> because the stone is still there. <sighs> Chloe, can you talk? Hold on. Yeah, I'm here. In all this digging they've done, have they found any bodies, any remains at all? No, now that you mention it, nothing. Why? <laughs> Over 600 people were shipwrecked here, yet there's no bodies. Don't you find that a little odd? So where did they all go? Where would you go if a tsunami hit? To higher ground. Bingo. 
We head to that mountain. What do you bet we find Marco's pals? Chloe, can you meet up with us? Already on my way. Great. Uh-oh. Nate, you gotta get out of there. <laughs> You're gonna have to give me a minute, Sully. You don't have a minute. What's this? They're all dead. Oh, crap! Right out! Stay down, kid. I got you covered. Nate. Well, that's you... convenient. Get out! Your hands up.
Should be this way. Oh, Sully. Look at these stones. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Would you look at that? Oh, yeah. Hey. Hello. What do we have here? With any luck, the last resting place of Marco Polo's crew. Shall we check it out? Wow, oh, this place must be thousands of years old. At least. Down this way. Wow. Looks like we hit the jackpot. Ugh, there must be hundreds of bodies down here. Look at their teeth. They're all black. I think they're all that way. They must have taken refuge here during the tsunami. There's got to be some sort of clue around here. Hey, I think I found something. In here. What? They must have carried their cargo all the way up here after they were shipwrecked. More resin. I've seen this before. Sully, give me a light. 
Oh. Ooh. Wait a minute. This is blood. It's everywhere. Looks like a real massacre. All right, let's follow the blood stains. We'll see if they lead somewhere. Seems to end at this wall. Yeah, that's odd. This moves a little. Sully, help me out. Here we go again with the pushing. I think I hurt myself. The trail leads in here. More oh my God. You know, maybe I'm crazy, but it looks like they all killed each other. Just getting spooked. Wow. Look at this. What do we have here? Careful. Christ ah! <laughs> almighty. Just kidding. Nate, you're gonna give me a goddamn heart attack. Oh. Man, is that an ugly friggin' thing? What is it? Some kind of weapon? No, no, it's a, a perba. It's a ritual object from Tibet. It's used to destroy obstacles. Huh? No, you know, spiritual ones. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait, could this be what Marco Polo was talking about? Kid, I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> In his journal, he wrote that uh, the worthy seeker would be given a golden passport to conquer obstacles on the journey to Shambhala. So, what, this is it? Look, that's all really interesting, but where the hell is it a passport to? Well, maybe this map would help. Let me see that. <laughs> Between Greater India and the province of Tibet lies a field of exquisitely finished temples. Hundreds of gilded spires stretching as far as the eye can see. Hold on, I know this place. It's in Nepal. Yeah, except it's not just a field of temples anymore, it's a city. Well, that could make things a little more challenging. Now, hold on, there's more. In all these many temples, only one conceals the secret path to Shambhala. And that path shall only be revealed to the pilgrim who bears the golden passport. All <laughs> right, nice work, kid. So what are we waiting for? <laughs> Let's get out of here. All right. See ya. Let's get going. I'm going to go out and make sure the coast is clear. I'll see you in a bit. Give me a hand, Nate. Oh, God damn it. Come on. Harry! In here! It's Drake! What the hell are- Get your hands up. You sure know how to pick them. Shut up, Sonny. Should've known it was you. <laughs> and you, Victor goddamn Sullivan. You still dragging this tired old sack of shit around? Easy, Nate. 
That's pretty ballsy for a guy who spent the last three months behind bars. Better than pissing away three months in the jungle without a clue. Found the ships, though, didn't I? You couldn't find your own ass with both hands. And a map. They came from down there. Whoa. Harry, look at this. Speaking of maps... Between India and Tibet... One temple will reveal a pathway to Shambhala. Jesus, Flynn, while we're young. Oh, no. Don't be such a bad sport. Take them to Lazarevich. You're gonna wish you'd stayed in prison, mate. Move. Come on, keep moving! Oh, shit. Are you all right? Yeah, well, it'll make it look more believable. Now I'm gonna try and buy you some time. No, Chloe, you have to come with us. No. Just meet me in Nepal. Now run. Let's go. I like her. Yeah, I bet you do. They spotted us! Jump? Oh, hold on there, son bitch. You gotta be out of your mind. We'll break our goddamn necks. Yeah, if we get caught, Lazarevich will break them for us. I'm getting too old for this bullshit. Oh, come on, now don't you start this again. Listen, I don't have your luck. Guys like me gotta know when to walk away from the table. Sully, we're gonna get out of this, okay? We always do. Yeah. You go meet your girl in Nepal. I'm going somewhere warm. Come on. Hey, you can tell me all about it when you get back. Shit. Well, shall we? After you, Butch. See you in hell, kid. <laughs> Shit. Well, when you said Lazarevich had a head start on us, you weren't kidding. Well, he's had some help from the local guerrillas. The city's been on the brink of civil war for years. He just needed to throw a little gasoline on the fire. Charming. Yeah, well, all the chaos provides some cover while he destroys the city looking for the right temple. Nate? Hello? Yeah, I'm still here. You're not having second thoughts, are you? Oh, me? Never. Good, because I'm so ready to be done with these clowns. You got a map? Uh... Yeah. I'll meet you in the old market. Things are pretty quiet over there. All right, you got it. Uh-oh. You got company. Oh, great. Can you lose them? I think it might be too late for that. Come on. Nate, are you all right? I've been better. Okay. 
The old market. Ought to be this way. Find him. Crap. <laughs> Go, go, go! He's here somewhere. Keep your eyes open. <laughs> 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 I'm not going that way. Parking job.
Seems like I am always saving your ass. Well, it is an ass worth saving. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is that an ancient Tibetan ritual dagger in your pocket? Oh, maybe I'm just happy to see you. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, hello. So this is the key to everything. Yes, it is. Marco Polo's passport to Shambhala. What do we do with it? Ah, I have no idea, actually. I do know Lazarevich won't get very far without it. I wouldn't underestimate him, you know. He and Flynn have been tearing this city apart. They must have leveled dozens of temples already. So what's our next move? Nate? I hate it when you do that. <laughs> Check this out. You see the symbol? Yeah. Look up there. Okay, I see the resemblance, so what does it mean? It means we know how Marco Polo found his next clue. The temple we're looking for is going to be marked with this emblem. Now all we have to do is find it. <laughs> you do realize there are literally hundreds of these temples throughout the city. Yes, but if we found a higher vantage point... We could spot our needle in the haystack. Right. There's a hotel not far from here. <laughs> Chloe. Now is not the time. It's easily the tallest building in the city. Right. Right. Well, okay. That's, uh, that's good thinking. Follow me. Yep. It's no good. It's locked. Wait here. I'll see if I can find a way around. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, I can see the hotel from up here. Yeah, I know, we're almost there. Stand back! On the fire! Got you back!
Give me a boost. I think I can reach that ladder. Boy, it's a shame you have to sit on something that pretty. Here you go. Say I never do anything for you. Come on, this way. Go. Okay. Any day now. Just don't want to get a straight car. That was chivalrous, huh? Yeah, it's not dead. You just gotta ask for it. Things are going too well for the resistance. I don't like these odds. No? No, I think maybe we should cut over to the hotel a different way. Just avoid this crew altogether. I'm sorry, do you have a plan to go along with that grenade? Yes, I do. I'm gonna circle around this way, break up their little party. Aren't you forgetting about somebody? Well, that's where you come in, sweetheart. I need you to take care of him. But uh, do it quietly. Do it quietly? Yeah. Are you sure about this? Desperate times, right? What does that mean?
Just about had him. I think that's the last of them. Well, this is the hotel. Now we just have to find a way up. Hey. What? Over here. Come and check this out. There's a fire escape. I think this is our best bet. Give me a boost up. You got it. Okay. You got it? Yep. Come on up. All right. Looks clear so far. Is there another way in? Not from here. Very resourceful. All right, I'm in. Pleasant. You must have hit a generator. Give me a hand. Just a little more. Nate, move. It's no good. I'm gonna have to fix the power to get you out. You gonna be okay? Yeah, I wish I'd brought something to read. Looks like the circuit breaker's on the top floor. Just sit tight, I'll take care of it. Great. Power's out and a girl's trapped. I swear to God, if there's a zombie around the next corner...
God. Almost there. Come on. Up she goes. Oh, I think you're liking this a bit too much. Check it out. Marco. Really? Come on. No. Marco. Hello. Fish out of water. You are so <laughs> Still more climbing. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. <clears throat> well, here we are. Now we just gotta find the right temple. Well, that may be easier said than done. No, tell me about it. Maybe we can... Oh, bingo. There it is. That's the one. Yeah, it's gotta be. The one in the middle of Ow. all the gunfire and explosions. Lucky us. Nate, that's right where Lazarevich is camped. I was hoping we'd be headed in the opposite direction. Well, desperate times, right? Drake has been spotted in Sector 18. Oh, crap. Any chance this is Sector 19? Sweep the city, find him, and take him up. <sighs> Son of a bitch. All right, time to go. Come on, Nate, let's get moving. Damn it. How the hell do we get across? Oh god, be careful. Holy shit. Here, I've got you. Give me your hand. Just go! Don't stop!
better. Was in that. <laughs> this way, come on. Guess we caught this hotel in the down season, huh? Ha <sighs> ha. Come on. Bridge! Sweet! Yeah, he told me about it. The resistance side is built and spread across the rooftops. Lucky for us.
That wire. That's our way down. Go, go. All right, all right.
Oh, hey, hey, don't you... Hey! <sighs> Nate? What the hell are you doing here? Elena? <clears throat> Jack, don't! <clears throat> Wait, you know this guy? Yeah. This is Drake. Oh. Sorry. So, what's your angle on all this misery? You gonna plunder a few temples, loot the museum? It's nice to see you two. I suppose you're here for some noble crusade, right? Actually, we're trailing a fugitive war criminal. Zoran Lazarevich, have you heard of him? Isn't that NATO's job? Well, they think that he's dead. Killed in some bombing raid. Oh, and you're here to prove otherwise. You know what? This guy's a real monster, Nate. We're talking torture, mutilation, mass executions. See, now he's, he's plotting something new. But why out here? Why, why tear apart the city, you know? It just doesn't make any sense. Oh. What? Now, tell me you don't have anything to do with this. <laughs> That's ridiculous. There you are, Nate. I think I lost them. Oh, whoa, whoa. It's all right, Chloe. They're journalists. Oh. Oh. We need to keep moving if we want to stay one step ahead of Lazarevich, so... Oh, man, Nate! Uh, hey, wait, wait, wait. Now, don't jump to conclusions, Elena. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Am I sensing some history here? Oh, Elena Fisher. Last year's model. <laughs> That's cute. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Glad you find this so funny. Well, it's just, I never figured you for the white bread picket fence type. Hey, she's a lot tougher than she looks, thank you. <sighs> oh. Oh, what? She broke your heart. Oh, please. <laughs> she did. Hey, you didn't know what? She? Maybe I broke hers. Oh, yes, Casanova. We need to get moving. Uh, wait. Um, they're coming with us. Can't be serious. Uh, yeah, I am. I mean, I can't just ditch him in the middle of this mess. They're only going to slow us down, and if uh, we Chloe, don't, if Lazarevich catches you and me together, I'm not leaving them behind. You don't always have to play the bloody hero, you know. Nate, just dance with the one who brought you, all right? Yeah, I get it. But they're still coming with us. Well, we don't need saving, Nate. Thank you. <laughs> You might want to rethink that. Shit. Run! Look out! Oh, what's next? Hey, go! Are you still doing this? Don't ask for this trouble. Pretty good shot for a journalist. I've had some practice. Just keep moving.
Help me with this door. On three. One, two, three. That's it. Thanks. Great. How are we gonna get across? There's a ladder on the far side. Maybe we should swim across. Current's too strong. We'll never make it. Come on, boost you up.
like this with him? Pretty, Pretty much. much. That'll come in handy. See anything up there? Come on, this way. Those are resistance fighters. Have to hurry. We should be safe in here. about that, huh? You brought us right to the doorstep. <laughs> so I'm guessing it's not a coincidence that we ended up here? Uh, no, not exactly. <laughs> God, you're an ass. Okay, just what is it you're after, anyway? See that symbol up there? It's called the Chintamani Stone. Nate? It's a massive raw sapphire. It's worth millions. So let me get this straight. You're competing with a psychopathic war criminal for a mythological gemstone? When you put it that way, it does sound pretty stupid. Yeah, thanks for the input, Jeff. And it's supposedly in this temple. Uh, well, no. It, stone itself isn't here. Hey, look at that. No? Uh, no, it's in Shambhala. Shambhala? Nate? Yeah, you know, Shangri-La. Can I have a word with you, darling? On second thought, perhaps we should continue this conversation inside. Good idea. Come on. All right, we should be saving here for now. This just doesn't add up, Nate. Lazarevich can't be after the money. He doesn't need it. You're missing something. Come on. We haven't got all day. You two stay here. All right. Promise me you'll stay put. We'll be right back. Famous last words. <laughs> oh, well, that's more like it. You don't think they're a couple, do you? They're not a couple. Uh.
him. This is definitely the right temple. Well, that looks like the Chintamani stone, all right. There must be a hidden entrance here somewhere. Wait, I've seen this guy before. It's something to do with the arms. Hang on, I'm gonna get a closer look at this thing. Sure. I'll just wait down here. How's that look? Well, how am I supposed to know you've got the damn book? I'm exhausted just looking at you. Nice work. Nice one. Thank you. Got it. Oh! Oh! God, you're lucky. Hey, come on, admit it. You're impressed. I am. I'll throw you a banana. <clears throat>
Chloe, this isn't just a dagger. It's a key. Hmm. Well, let's find out what it opens. <sighs> it's pretty creepy, but say ah. Uh... <clears throat> Do anything. The water's going down. And I found the door it opened. We've done it. Well, technically I did it. Be right there. What do you think? You game? Ladies first. If you say so. <sighs> Thank God I'm not claustrophobic. You know, it's actually kind of romantic down here. All right. There's the chocolates and flowers. <laughs> you never were a chocolate and flower kind of girl. Oh, you know me so well. You're not going to get us trapped in a small dark space 30 meters underground, are you? Probably. A little bit of a drop. All right, I'm coming. Little drop. Yeah, maybe I underestimated. It's like some kind of tree. And um, what's that got to do with the money thing? You got me. It's opening up down here. Okay.
All right, come on, follow me. Oh, I'm hungry. Hey, that thing looks familiar. Yeah, it looks like the Perba Dagger. Uh huh. These lights must activate it somehow. Huh, nothing happened in here. Those mirrors seem important. We just have to bounce the light around the room. One down, two to go. What do you reckon? You're gonna have to climb that thing? I reckon I'm gonna have to climb that thing. Up here and see if we can get a better look. Okay, be careful up there. Such a good idea down there.
There's more reflectors up here. Chloe! Yeah? Adjust the other reflector. I'm on it. Nice work. Okay, now what? Hold on. Okay, I think we're getting close. That did it. Yep, that's another one down. It looks like that blade opened up a new path. Your left. Got it. One more blade to go. Now how am I going to get that eye open? We just need to adjust that other reflector. Good, that's it. That did it. down.
So, the secret of Shambhala is down this guy's throat? I guess so. I know where that is. That's right here. You see the shape of, of that peak there? Uh-huh. Here it is. Which means... Let me use your back. Which means... The entrance to Shambhala must be right here. So, we did it. We did it. Yes. <laughs> we did it. Oh, crap. That kills the mood. There's only one way out of here. You ready? Let's go. They must have gone right through Jeff and Elena. We've got to get back to the entrance. I'm a little more worried about us right now.
There they are! Now's our chance. Let's get out of here. We gotta hurry. Got you! Bring it! Nate, get away! 
here. Come on. Oh, shit. Where are they? I knew this would happen. Better keep moving. He's hit. Uh, I'm okay. Let me see. Oh. All right, you're gonna be fine. All right. Think you can stand? I think so. All right, come on, I'll help you. No. No, no, no. Leave that. It's busted anyway. Here we go. Up. Oh. 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 Nate. He's fine, aren't you, Chief? All right, get the door open. He's never gonna make it. We have to leave him. What? No! Get the door open, Chloe! Gonna get us all killed! Oh. That's it! Let's go. Go! Whoa! I think we're clear. Oh, look out! That was close. You're gonna be okay. Uh, stay with me. Oh shit! Heads up, Elena! Get out of there! Hey! 
We can make that. He can't. Oh, no, you don't. We don't have a choice. <laughs> Nate? Okay. You tried, but it's over. He can't go any further. We can't just leave him here to die. He is as good as dead already, and so are we if we don't go now. Then go. Yeah. Nobody's stopping you. Chloe. <laughs> I was trying to save your skin, you idiot. Chloe? What is this? Up the stairs! Sorry. Drop the guns. Seriously. Get her out of here. She's hurt. Take her to the train. Unbelievable. You just can't help yourself, can you? I guess that makes us even. Not quite. So, this little man is Drake. Hmm. Did you carry him all the way from the temple? Shame. No! Now, tell me what you found in the temple. The answer that you're looking for. Okay? I know where the stone is, but you're not gonna find it without me. So just... Just let her go, and I will lead you right to it. My shadow. You are the reporter who has been biting at my heels. You better pray that he is not bluffing. Search him. Come on. <laughs> that is brilliant, mate. Yeah. It appears you have nothing to bargain with, Mr. Drake. Return to the staging ground. Prepare to move out. You, come with me. You. Take care of them. No problem. How can you work for that monster? Beats working against him, love. So that's it, huh? Just gonna mow us down in cold blood? Looks that way, doesn't it? Get up. I said get up! Ah! Run! Stop that! Hey! Go, oh, go! Stop you alright? Yeah. Keep going, keep going. Get off the clothes, Nate. Come on! Uh, 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 
way. Get down. You all right? Yeah. Never better. <laughs> you? Nothing I won't heal. <sighs> I think we lost him. Never should have got you into this mess. You didn't. I got here on my own. Nah. I mean, you know, the, the rest of it. Oh, we knew what the stakes were. <sighs> okay, so, uh, what do we do now? I'm going after her. Of course you are. Typical. Go after her. <laughs> Flynn said something about a train. Which means they would have taken her to the rail yard. Here. So it should be that way. Past the water tower there. Nate, she pulled a gun on us. I know. She was about to pull the trigger too. They just beat her to it. It's complicated. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. Flynn knew she was with me. If Lazarevich finds out she double-crossed him, you know what he'll do to her. Yeah, I've seen his handiwork. Then you know I don't really have much of a choice. Honor among thieves, huh? Something like that. I sure hope you know what you're doing. I don't have the faintest idea. <laughs> ah, good to know that some things just never change. Okay, let's go. What? Oh, no, 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 no. You're not coming with me. Nate, shut up. Okay? We have a train to catch. There's the water tower. Right behind you. Spread out! Wait here. They're everywhere. Be careful. I always am. Anything. Nothing yet. <sighs> Gotta get a gun. <laughs> Found good. anything yet? Nothing here. All clear. Let's head to that water tower. Gotta find a way up there. Were you impressed? Got all those guys all by myself? I don't know if I would use the word impressed.
See anything? There's a fire escape up here, but I can't reach it. All right, just wait up a sec. Okay. Ugh. <clears throat> hey, once you're up there, just kick it down <clears throat> to me. Matter. Is it locked? Uh, it's stuck. You know, I think it's blocked from the other side. All right, I'll try to find another way around and unstuck it. Good idea. But you're the one behind bars. Ah. <laughs> hey, why don't you be a gentleman and open this door? Stand back. Almost. There we go. Try it now. Okay. Oh. Now I'm impressed. Oh no. Hey, we got company! Crap. We're up there on the left! Left and right, they're everywhere! See about that. It's over, Drake. We'll see about that. I can make it. Ah! Perfect. Yeah, not bad for last year's model. Been waiting to use that. Ah! 
Nice, we're at the water tower. Yeah, we made it. All right, stay low. Ugh. So you got a plan B? I'm working on it. There she is. Flynn's got her. Second thoughts? No. Okay. They're about to take this show on the road, so we're gonna have to move fast. Now I'm going down there alone. No, Nate. Wait, wait, wait. Just listen. You never listen. Meanwhile, you're gonna go over there, snag us one of those nice looking four by fours. Four by fours. Mm. You're gonna be the wheel man. I'll sneak in, I'll grab Chloe. You come in right behind us. With the getaway car. With the getaway car. Yep, got it. Got it? I got it. Go. You all right? Whoa. Yeah. All right, be careful. the smell of train yards in the morning. Get up here for a better look. There's the train. How the hell am I gonna get down there? Ah! <clears throat> There's gotta be a way out of here. Maybe I could get this old thing moving.
gonna make me miss my train! nowhere to be found. Now these two can you can show up. Up time! Get in! Hurry! Go, go! So, you got a plan C? Yeah, floor it. What? I'm getting on that train. What are you, crazy? Just get me close enough to jump. Guess that answers that question. Step on it! So, how do you plan on getting her off that speeding train? I haven't thought that far ahead. Of course not. Okay. Okay, here we go. No, hold on, hold on. Almost there!
boys. Just needed to punch your tickets. Take your drink order.
off this thing.
another way.
jerkweed. Save my ass again. Are you all right? Get off the train, Nate. What are you talking about? You have any idea what I've been through? I never asked for any of your bloody heroics. Chloe, come on. We don't have time for this. You're right. So get off the train while you still can. And leave you with them. You made your choice. What did you expect me to do? I expected you to have my back. I had your back. How could you possibly with the other two on yours? Well, good luck with Flynn. We deserve each other. You know, I can't believe... You just don't know when to quit, do you? What? No witty remark? Nothing clever to say? I don't. No! <coughs> oh, no, you don't! Stop. Just let him go. Put him out of his misery! they used to. This one holds.
a firm. <laughs>
threat.
climb out over there. Bleed out or I'm gonna climb out. How did I get here? How long have I been out? Yeah. Tom. Tom. Thanks. Uh, no, no, no. That's that's plenty. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Thanks. Yeah, Yeah, sure. Shepherd Karan Gudesha. Sure. Who Karan is the Kaja Shea Gudesha? The hell am I? Sure. Yen am the show. Guess I'm supposed to follow him. Does anyone speak English? Hey, Mo. I don't suppose you speak English, do you? I got it. Follow you. Go somewhere. Excuse me. What? Hey! 
One of these houses has to have a telephone. Kick it back. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Wanna kick the ball? Forget it. Uh, <laughs> 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 Gentlemen, do you speak English? Didn't think he got me caught a bear. Oh, got it. Bonda, I can't say something. Can you see so? Hey, kids, I see you hiding. Just when I thought I had nothing left to lose. Nate! Oh, thank God you're all right! <laughs> I'm sorry, I... It's all right. Elena, tell me you have some idea of what's going on. I mean, how long have I been here? Hey, only a few days. I followed the tracks to the wreckage. What the hell happened? Uh, you were right about Chloe. Turns out she wasn't exactly looking to be rescued. Wait, did she do no. that? No, no, I have Flynn to thank for this. Chef a good dish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go too soon. Come on. There's somebody who's anxious to meet you. So, our mysterious guest awakes. Nate, this is Carl Schaefer. How are you feeling? Good. Thanks. But good. Please, sit. It appears you and I have much in common, Mr. Drake. Is that so? Yes. Seventy years ago, I came here just like you, carried into the village near death, the last survivor of my company. I was hired to lead an expedition into Tibet to find the entrance to Shambhala. What they really wanted was the Chintamani stone. So, my friend, where did you find this? Borneo. Why? This is the key to Shambhal. It's the one object your opponent desperately needs, even if he does not know it yet. <laughs> oh, I think he knows. Look, I'm very grateful for everything you've done for me. I really am, but I'm through with all this. So... They have beaten you, huh? Your quest is over? Yeah, that's right. What if it's only beginning? Where did you find this guy? <laughs> Trust me, young man, your ego will mend. You're just lucky to be alive. Yeah, you know, people are always telling me how lucky I am. But the truth is, everything I touch turns to shit. Nate. No, Elena, I'm done. Now, come on, I'm through playing the hero. Your adversary will not give up so easily. He will not stop until he possesses the thing he desires. Oh, yeah? Well, more power to him. Power is precisely the problem. Some of the most fearsome rulers through history have possessed only a fragment of the Chintamani stone. And like Tamburlaine, Genghis Khan, if a mere sliver could bestow such power, what would a man become if he possessed the stone itself? 
This is crazy. It's got to be what he's after, Nate. Then Lazarevich really is a nut job. He's chasing a myth. And what if he's not? Uh, Helena, come on. Well, I mean, what if it's true? We've seen what he's capable of. I understand your doubt. You require proof. Something you can see with your own eyes. Tenzin, Tinsan Antara Tingonre. Find the remains of my expedition, and you will have your proof. Tenzin will guide you. Sure. I hope I live to regret this. Just come back in one piece. Don't suppose you speak any English, do you, pal? Looks inviting. What's it say? Do you touch anything? Why do I ask? Do you dance song? I'm not so good with your age, pal. Go fast, show me go. Wait, Tenzin. Why do you need that? Quite a drop. Got it. Aha, deep panther something. Man, there's no way we're getting across there. What you got there? What? Yeah, good luck, Bell. I mean, that's almost impossible to... Oh, you did it. Nice. Sure, let's just swing across on the 70-year-old rope. Show! You need to show! I hope you know where you're going, buddy. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. Nigetada. Looks like we're on the right track, but there's nothing here. This can't be what Schaefer meant. Manzo tribunal ya tadun dore. Pinedo. Oh, that way. Sure. Those things bite, you know.
These are snow boots, not track shoes. More wolves. Fantastic. What'd you find? Rodri Schaefer gave me him, but touch it. Been dead a long time. Eh? Dada. Into Monty Stone. Must have been one of Schaefer's men. Dates my the best sauce. Dent, come on. All right, I'll give you a boost. What? Yeah, yeah, I'm Yeah, I still don't speak that. Me first, huh? Okay. Come on! I'll catch you! What's wrong? Uh, I got you. Uh, yeah, there you go. You owe me one, pal. Ugh. <sighs> 
开车嘛是，阿姨。What was that? Yeah, come on. This, what did this? Yeah, come on. Tenzin, we gotta get moving. All right, just stay here. Here. Such a de la tombe, sir. Hey, Schaefer says hello. Oh, let's hope this is loaded.
was that thing? Nhen lap song a dong de khen za ji re. Come here. I'll boost you up there. How am I gonna get up there? Mikta! Dropping like flies. Oh, that'll work. Stairs? Oh, must be getting somewhere. Why do you bet we need to get to that statue? Sensen, stand on that other switch. I bet I could climb those, if they were a little lower.
Tenzin! Tenzin! Pull that switch! Now we're talking. Tenzin, take the easy way.
Ja, ja. Right now, how am I going to get across? <sighs> Gotta get over there somehow. Well, guess I'm doing it the hard way. Ugh! 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 
Good reflexes. <laughs> yeah, not this. Hope there's another way out of here. <sighs> Drake, tell us shot. This must be them. Schaefer's expedition. Oh. Well. Chintamani stone. Look at this. These men were all shot. Hey, Tata. Oh, that's the uh, Irman Sul. It's uh, the life tree. The Honor Nerbe. Oh, Jesus. They were SS. No, God's a muscle. Uh, Nazis. Nazi? What would a man become? Tenzin. Schaefer did this. Ah. Huh. Schaefer killed them. Mare, mare. Yes. It's the only way to stop them. Uh. Shell. Sure. Shit. We have to find a way out of here. Now. There's a switch. We 
gotta get the hell out of here. Versos. Emma. Thank God. Oh, Nate. What happened? It's Lazarevich. They found us. Emma, call. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Schaefer's got her. Cut it. Mol Schaefer and Yum Dudo. Schaefer. They went the other way. All right. Nate, this is our fault. We did this. Just stay here. We keep them safe. Come on.
걸려. 아. 
Shock, go for shock. We'll see about that. Sign of him.
Go for sure. Bema. 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 Zhang Sheng, I'm not sure. What? I'll give you shit, Jiang Sheng, I'll give you shit. Shiver, big guy. Holy shit! Oh crap. Jump! Jump! Oh 
shit! Hey, what's up? Where the hell did he go? Where the hell did you go?
Schaefer. Where's Schaefer? They come chase you, so. Nate! They took Schaefer. Oh, God. It's because he had the dagger. Uh, I know. Hey! No time to argue. We gotta go. All right. Well, at least scooch over. Okay. They must have taken him in the lead car. We gotta stop him before Lazarevich gets a hold of him. All right, I have an idea. Well, what are you doing? I'm gonna clear the road. Here, take the wheel. What? Just take it. Why didn't you just let me drive in the first place? I didn't think that far ahead. Yeah. Right. Hold it steady. Okay. That's good. Closer. There you go.
Come on. Just like old times, huh? You could say that. So now what? We head to the creepy old monastery. What else? There's Schaefer. Damn it. What's happening? Lazarvish has him. Oh no. Ugh. You ready for this? As I'll ever be. Almost there. You got it? Uh-huh. Right, quietly now. Come on. Nice view. Men. No, no, I was talking about the mountains. Really. Come on. Who hasn't checked in? The last truck never arrived. Keep an eye out. It's up this way. Careful. Soldiers. They haven't seen us yet. Hang back. I'll take these guys out.
We'll see about that.
Keep going! Go, go! Okay. That was close. It's a long way down. Looks like that beam's the only way across. I think I see a rope down there. Okay, sit tight. I'll go down there and throw it up to you. Catch! Got it! Huh. Right, follow me! Have to jump for it. I'll catch you. Okay. I got you. There. There. See? No sweat. Come on, over here. Okay. 
We'll push it. That's it. Whew. Hey, we can climb up this thing now. Come on. Be careful. God knows how old these boards are. Hey, I found a rope. There. Is that them? Damn it. Come on, we've got to hurry. It's locked. There's no way we're getting through here. Okay. I'll try to find another way around. Open it from the other side. You sit tight. All right, just try to be subtle. We don't want to attract any unnecessary attention. Subtle. Right. Got it. Ugh. 
For subtle. Tell it to the guy with the RPG. Coming at you. Ah! <laughs> 
what I need. Snipers! Elena, come on! I'll boost you up. Watch yourself up there. Uh. All right, here. Uh. Come on! We gotta get across that bridge. We can't go out there now. Those snipers will cut us to pieces. Hey, I think there's a sniper rifle up there.
That's the last of them. Let's get across that bridge. There they are. That son of a bitch. We don't have much time. We're gonna hurt. Come on! And there she goes. Right behind you. in a bridge with you again. Deal. All right, let's get these doors open. Okay. Come on, give me a hand. Uh. Uh. Oh. Oh. Be careful. Right behind. We're getting close. Get back. There's Lazarevich. Stand guard. Stay alert. Yes, sir. Where's Schaefer? I don't know. They must be holding him up there.
coming! Here! Okay, this way. Just like the fire escape. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, when you get up there, kick it down. Oh. oh no. I didn't mean literally. Oh. Hang on, hang on. Back away, back away. 
special delivery. That'll work. Good thinking. Okay. Here we go. Whoa! Oh. Ow. Uh, you hanging in there? Yeah, cute. Uh, uh, uh. Alright. There you go. Getting closer. Uh, hey, hey, hey! Shh, shh. All right, keep your head down. Stay alert. Come on, follow me. Oh. Up there. That must be where they're holding Schaefer. Crap.
Okay. There they are! Oh no. It's okay. We're here. You are right. About what? Everything you touch does turn to shit. Alright, come on. We're gonna get you out of here. No. What do we do? Did you find my expedition? Yes, I found them. You understand what I had to do? Yes. If they had found the stone, it would have changed the course of history. Okay, easy, easy. He took the dagger. I know. He's gone to the tower. You have to stop him. Uh, try, try not to move. This monastery hides the secret path to Shambhala. You must get the dagger back, find the secret path, and destroys the stone before he gets his hands on it. Drake, you have to believe. Oh. Schaefer. Oh, paint. We can't just leave him. What choice do we have? You heard him. Do you think all this really could be true? I don't know. But he believed it. That's enough for me. <sighs> okay. I think we should split up. What? No, listen. I'll go scope out the secret entrance thing, and you go to the tower and figure out how to get that dagger back. Uh, yeah, all right. Uh, just keep your head down and uh, stay in radio contact. Yeah, okay. Good luck.
Whoa. the tower. Over here! Whoa, 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 whoa. 
Yeah. I probably should have warned you about them. Warned me? Wait, you knew about these things? When were you planning on telling me? Just lay low and stay out of their way. Ooh, finally. The tower. I'm tired of your excuses. Look, give me some more time. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> I have given you enough time. I have brought you the dagger. Now, where is the gate to Shambhala? Look, Zoran, we know... <laughs> I have not come this far to be thwarted by your incompetence. We know the answer is somewhere in this room. We just have to find it. Meanwhile, Drake remains just one step behind you. I clearly hired the wrong man for the job. What an asshole. I'll uh, 
I'll try to smooth things over with him. Just stay here. See what you can work out. That belongs to me. Nate? Get out of here. Give me the dagger. They'll be here any Chloe, minute. Chloe, don't make me take it from you. How am I supposed to explain where it's gone? Well, you'll think of something. You always do. Just... Just do one thing for me. Take that son of a bitch down. for it. Wait a minute, this all looks familiar. with a color. Bet I could move these things. Huh. All right. What's next? This one's in the wrong spot. Damn it. Where's Sully when you need him?
That should do it! Oh, shit. More? Okay, I've seen these symbols before. One is matched with a color just like the creatures. Three-sided, just like the dagger. Well, well, well. You see the base of the cliff with all the statues? Uh-huh. Meet me there. You got it. I'm on my way.
Elena, you there? Yeah. I'm over here. I can see you. What the hell are those guys doing? Looks like they're pulling the statues down. The geniuses are right on top of it. Well, here goes nothing. Okay. I'm ready when you are.
Right here. This is it. Help me push. Okay. Put your back into it. Nag, nag, nag. Plain sight. Come on. This way. I think there might be a quick way down over here. Uh, uh. Whoa. Whoa. Uh. At least it's keeping them busy. Uh. You see that? Stay back. Get down! Pelling down that wall. Eat this.
Thanks for the rope, boys. Hope there's nothing scary at the top. All right, it's all clear. Come on. We're getting close, I know it. There's some doors up here, I need your help. Okay. All right, go. <laughs> here it is, Elena. The secret entrance to Shambhala. Neither do I. If I have to climb another wall... Keep looking around. There has to be a clue somewhere. Are you sure this is it? It has to be. We're missing something. Stay behind me. Drop the gun. Do it! Stay back! Shit. I should have killed you myself when I had the chance. Not a mistake I will make twice. Back off! Oh, pull the trigger, little one. See how long you live. Now, you will open the passage to Shambhala. Go to hell. Are you a student of history, Mr. Drake? I've read a book or two. Mm. Genghis Khan, Hitler, Stalin, Pol Pot, they were all great men. But do you know why they prevailed? I'm sure you're gonna tell us. Because they had the will to do what other men would not. <laughs> Compassion is the enemy. Mercy defeats us. Now, unless you wish to test me still further, you will drop your weapons! Do it. Kick them away. So, you have tested my will. Now it is my turn to test yours. Killing us won't get you anywhere. Or killing him, yes. But you? You hurt her. You get nothing from me. Well, then it appears we are at a stalemate. Unless I add another pawn to the board. Bring her in! Shit. Ah. Get your hands off me. <laughs> now, one we will use as a lesson, and the other we will use incentive to cooperate. You choose. This is bullshit, Nate. Yeah, don't play into his game. You want my help, you let them go. This is not a negotiation! Who would you sacrifice, and who would you save? What, this one? You want to save this one? Or maybe this one? 
Hmm? You know what? Enough of this shit. All right, quit the theatrics. I'll do what you want. Calm down. You, asswipe. Give me your lighter. Should I know? Find a way across. And fix it! And take him with you. Maybe this time it will get done right. Oh, and Mr. Drake. Don't try anything clever. After you. Stabbing son of a bitch. Yeah, well, I learned from the best, didn't I? Get a move on. Come on. You first, darling. Yeah, big man with that gun, aren't you? Try to keep up. I'm keeping up. I'm letting you go first. Hold on. Wait for me. Daddy's got a gun. I can't believe Lazarevich hasn't killed you yet. Give me a boost, buddy. Huh, buddy. There we go. Oh, look out, it's a stone throw. What? Right. Hey! Sorry. Is that blocking your path? Glad you find this so funny. Sorry about that. Great. What's wrong, mate? Can you trust me? You should have more faith in me, chub. There you go, sweetheart. Get ahead of me. Go on. You better not be leading me into a dead end. Through here. I don't think you're gonna get your stomach through there. Help me move this. Aye, aye. Good teamwork. Just like the good old days, eh?
We just have to get up high. It's like Stone Age, isn't it? No. Help me push this. Come on, girly girl. There you go. Statue of your mom. You can make that jump on your own. Well, if you can I do sure it, hell I'm not gonna I help can't. You. Little help, little help. Never mind, just kidding. Let's open it up. They say behind the door is another door. Okay. So what do you have to do? What do we have to do? Just wait here. As usual, I'll take care of everything. Would you? Wait. What? Those symbols. I know those symbols. Such a little book, such big cylinders. Could you hurry up? Oh, I'm trying to concentrate. Come on, mate. We haven't got all day. Wouldn't want to piss off Lazarevich, now would we? Do me a favor, Flynn. Shoot my ears off, please.
What's that? Just came out the floor. Come on. Make yourself useful. What are we grinding? Wait, what is this? There we go. Smells like water. him. What the hell are those things? <laughs> what? Scarecrows. Guardians to frighten trespassers. Yeah? Well, it's bloody got Frick you! Zarvich. Done what you asked. Let them go. Always bargaining. But you have played your last hand. And lost. Looks like it's the end of the road, mate. No, 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 no. Not yet. I want him to see Shambhala. And die knowing that I have taken it from him. Open the gate! been a thorn in my side for far too long. On your knees! Well, hey, hey, uh, Zorin, we had a deal. I do not suffer traitors. Oh, right, so I suppose you know exactly how to find stone then, won't be needing me. Thanks. On your knees! What is this? Fire, you fools! Son of a... Run! Go! Run to the bridge! Go, go! 
Out of here now. I couldn't sleep for days after I saw that last time. All right, let's go. Come on, no time to sightsee. Let's keep moving. Someone else made it in here before us. Let's hope we have better luck making it out. Yeah. These bodies look like they've been here 60, 70 years. Hey. Didn't seem to do them much good, but here. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Well, Lazarovich and his crew will have headed into the city, so if we can just make it back to the entrance, it should be clear by now. Uh, no, Chloe, we're going after the Chintamani stone. <laughs> what? We have to stop Lazarovich. And how exactly do you plan on doing that? Get to the stone first before he does and destroy it. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Don't tell me you're buying into all that supernatural nonsense. I, I don't know what to believe anymore. Okay, well, just in case you missed it, that man is certifiable. He thinks he's fulfilling some sort of prophecy that the stone will somehow make him invincible. Immortal. <laughs> We're standing in the middle of Shambhala and you're questioning what's possible? Yeah, you saw how many bullets they pumped into those things? Something strange is going on here. All the more reason why we should get out while we still can. Uh, I'm just trying to set things right. And maybe save the world? Oh, God. <laughs> Listen, Sunshine. The world <laughs> doesn't care. You stick your neck out, you are asking to lose your head. You said yourself you want to take this guy down. Yes, and I want to see him pay more than you do. But that's not how it will end. This, this is how- No, not this time. <sighs> Come on. What do you say? That you're crazy. But let's go save your bloody world.
Sure. You can make these jumps. How you doing back there? We're coming. is flammable. Stand back. What the hell? Oh my god, what is that? Ah, doesn't look too creepy. Now we're talking. Let's go. Wait, that looks familiar. Of course, that must be where the Chintamani stone is. So beautiful. This place really must have been something back in the day. Quiet. It does feel kind of haunted, doesn't it?
Whoa, whoa, whoa. We got company. Shh. Told you. They're too damn quiet. Maybe they haven't seen us yet. Elena, get back. Oh, these soldiers are crawling all over the place.
The other counterweight's missing. Well, you look about the right size. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Fine. You guys all right?
hide forever. Looks like we need to get up to that ledge. Let's use the cart. There you go. Nice work, guys. Thanks for the help, Chloe. Don't mention it. There it is. Oh shit! Get down! There's guardians down here too!
Watch out for the guys with the slings! Console shots off! They just keep coming! Okay, all clear. Stone's gotta be here somewhere. Let's try heading up. All right. Come on, we better hurry. We're almost there. There it is. The Chintamani stone. I can't believe we beat them here. It's beautiful. Yep. Magnificent. <clears throat> now let's smash it and get the hell out of here. Uh, wait. Something's not right. What do you mean? Marco Polo had it wrong. This isn't a sapphire, it's amber. Amber? Yeah, you know, fossilized resin. It's tree sap. Wait a minute. What is it? You gotta be shitting me. Hello, Nate. I hate it when he does this. Tell me about it. How could I have missed it? Missed what? There's not actually a stone. It's the resin, the sap from the Tree of Life. Okay, hold on. Now you've lost me. This tree. No. That tree. There he is. Lazarevich. He's headed to the tree. Oh my god. The black teeth. What? The black teeth on those guardian things and the bodies in Borneo. They ate the resin, and it changed them somehow. And you think that's what Lazarevich is planning to do? You really want to wait around and find out? Bravo, shut up. Well done. Flynn? Jesus. Oh, Harry. What's the matter, mate? Disappointed Lazarevich beat you to it? I'm afraid you just missed him. I figured I'd stay behind and wait for you to come join my little party. What are you talking about? <laughs> Maybe that's what old Zoran wanted all along, eh? He's cleverer than he looks. Well, we can still stop him. <laughs> Elena, don't. No, we can help you. Sorry, love. This isn't a movie. 
And you're not the plucky girl who reforms the villain and saves the day. It's just not done like that. Flynn, listen to me. You... Parting gift from Nazarevich. Pity he took the pin. Get back! Elena! <laughs> no. Oh my god. Helena! Okay, you're gonna be okay. Come on, we're gonna get you out of here. Come on. Stop, Lazarevich, go! Not a chance, come on. Oh, shit! It's all right, I've got her, you cover us. This way.
You can do it. There we go. Elena, you all right? Uh, uh, come on, let's step over this. Watch your step. Uh, you can do it, come on, one big step. That's the last of them. Hey. Hey, Elena, how you doing, huh? Not good. You just hang in there, okay? I'm counting on you. Head for the gate. Go as fast as you can. What, what, what do you mean? No. No way. Look, Chloe, I have to end this. No, you don't. Don't you dare take on this stupid crusade. <clears throat> Just get her out of here. Not without you. Look, if that stuff could really transform Lazarevich and his army... Please don't do this. If it could actually make him invincible, and I didn't try to stop it... But this is suicide. And you know it. Just go. Get as far away from this place as you can. You're not my type. <laughs> no. No, no, no. You have got to be kidding me.
think you can stop me? Bring it on! I am a monster, but you're no different from me, Drake. How many men have you killed? How many just today? That's it, boy. No compassion, no mercy. Huh? Do it! No. <laughs> you don't have the will. Maybe not. But they do.
Just hold on. Come on, stay with us. You're gonna be okay, all right? You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be just fine. Elena, don't do this. Elena! So, it's been a long, strange trip, hasn't it? Yes, it has. <laughs> you know, you should play the hero more often. It suits you. Nah. <laughs> Tell me something, Nate. What? Do you love her? Chloe, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Really, it's all right. Just do yourself a favor, cowboy. Tell her. Chloe. No. My turn to walk away. But admit it. You're gonna miss this ass. <laughs> well, look who's not supposed to be out of bed. Yeah. He's a lousy patient. Stubborn as all hell. I'm not stubborn, I'm just restless. <laughs> so, no giant sapphire. Once again, no. <laughs> and you're sure of that? Yes. <laughs> just a metaphor, I'm afraid. Metaphor ain't gonna pay your bills, kid. Well, something else will come along. Just gotta have faith. Yeah. That and a quarter will get you 25 cents. <laughs> uh, which way'd Chloe go? See you later. Oh, no. <laughs> You're a dirty old man, Sullivan. Uh-huh. <sighs> you did good, Nate. I think he'd approve. Yeah? Uh-huh. So where do we go from here, huh? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't thought that far ahead. Of course not. <laughs> but then again, neither have I. Good. So, on a scale of one to ten, how scared were you that I was gonna die? Four. Four? Yeah, why? A four. four. Yeah. You were at least an eight. An eight? You were a total eight. An eight? Those guardian things were an eight. Are you kidding me? Yeah, those were terrifying. What's a ten? Clowns. Clowns over my death? I, I hate clowns. clowns. I hate clowns. Oh, my word. You thought I was dead. No. No, you thought I was no, gone. No. Yes, you did. No, I, I saw had you, you all shed along. tears. You shed a bunch of them. T 
tears. Mm -hmm. It was raining. No, it was not. <laughs> you were unconscious and it was raining. It was totally sunny out and you were bawling. It wasn't sunny. You were unconscious. Whatever. I kept your tears in a jar. I have proof. I'll give you five. How's that? Uncharted 2, we really wanted to not only tell a really compelling story with interesting characters, but we wanted to just put you in these over-the-top cinematic set-piece moments that feel ripped straight out of a summer blockbuster movie. It lets you have control over Drake as you're having to play through those, those set pieces. So we wanted to just give all the technology we could to the engine to allow us to create these moments. What the hell are they doing? On PlayStation 3, for our first game, we were using probably only 30% of the, uh, uh, the power of the cell, and this time we're like getting close to 100% of like using all the power of the PS3, and how can we use it just to make the game look just beautiful and have uh, better gameplay and just more everything over the top and all that stuff. Uncharted 1, when uh, it was a hard project because we, we had a, a lot of new IP, new team, new system, new engine, new everything. I, I would always say Uncharted 1 was like doing brain surgery with a chainsaw. In Uncharted 2, it's a totally different beast. We, we have pre precision instruments now that freed up a lot of time for the production, and that was huge because that gave us the time to do more creating rather than R&Ding. In Uncharted 2, we integrated use of the Havoc physics engine, as opposed to a proprietary physics engine we wrote for last game. We were able to do a lot more things we couldn't do last game. We can have light fixtures hanging up the ceiling that are dynamically reacting to events that are going on around you. We have destructible cover all over the place. What we want to do is blur the line between the pre-computed physics stuff that we pre-process in, in our 3D software and the stuff that's happening live in the game is dynamically reacting to explosions and gunfire. And our goal is to have those two things coexisting without ever betraying what's going on behind the scenes. The biggest thing I think that we want to do from Uncharted 1 to Uncharted 2 is really to just push the characters uh, to just a, another level of believability. We decided to just add a lot more polygons into the model and really redo the entire face rig to kind of get those secondary motions of the face, like the subtle details of like the muscles moving good. And we use like so much of the power of the PS3. I mean, we're literally creating characters that are just like film. It's pretty amazing. He can't know about us. We often talk about moments in the development of Uncharted, but they're these iconic images uh, packed with drama and uh, a spirit of adventure. And so the train was uh, definitely one of these. We wanted a technology that will let us place Drake on objects, be able to move those objects, break them apart, and still keep the player's gameplay intact the whole time. And we're calling them active cinematic experiences. You're fully in control of Drake while something big is happening like staging a battle on the roof and inside of and on the sides of a train that's speeding through the Himalayan countryside. 
that represented really major hills for us to climb in terms of technology and then how we would develop the gameplay scenarios inside of those spaces and using those technologies. But they're so instrumental, they're so fundamental to uh, the game that Uncharted 2 has become that we're very glad that we chose to do those things. Oh, crap! With the Uncharted franchise, we really are bringing a unique set of gameplay mechanics that no other game is providing. We're a third-person cover-based shooter, but we also have a hugely expansive traversal move set. So we've got characteristics of a platform game, and then we've got great hand-to-hand -hand melee combat. So it's all seamlessly fluid, and, and Drake just really feels like a fully realized human being, and anything that you think you could do, Drake can do. So in Uncharted 2, we had three pillars of gameplay. We had uh, traversal, we had gunplay, and we had hand-to-hand -hand combat. And we set up scenarios and we changed the animations. We did all these things that would enable you to kind of seamlessly go to any of those things at any time. And so we really wanted to kind of give that really good cohesive feel to, to, to your entire experience. We could not have made Uncharted 2 without uh, having made Uncharted 1. We had such a foundation, such a great base to start from that we built everything on top of. And so our goals for Uncharted 2 were to just, just really expand even more. We're constantly having to find ways to optimize into it. Like how can we squeeze more in um, during the experience? And we have more than achieved that goal. We've definitely outdone ourselves on this game. Oh God, be careful. Shit. We're gonna pack more explosions, more big budget Hollywood blockbuster explosions, buildings collapsing. You know, we want to maximize people's time. You know, if they're gonna spend 12 to 15 hours in our game running through it, we're gonna make sure that every minute of that there's something unexpected getting thrown at them, there's something falling down around them, and they're caught up in the middle of it. The optimizations and enhancements that they've done to this engine from Uncharted 1 to Uncharted 2 are, are mind-boggling, and we're using the PlayStation 3 hardware in a way that I'm not sure that anybody else really is. To have that visual experience be so right and so seamless that you get the effect of people not wanting to put the controller down. faced a huge number of challenges in making Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. One of the things that we did right at the beginning of the project was to write out kind of a, a list of the rules by which the, uh, the Uncharted world operates. It's very much a game about uh, exploration and discovery. It's kind of larger than life and it has these characters in the world who are often eccentric or surprising. Yeah, well, payback's a bitch. We have challenges in all fronts. It's how do you create a grounded character in a grounded setting, trying to get the pacing right, not only in the story, in the cutscenes, but in games, so they actually start playing the way that we're drawing them in the story. They need to look and react that way in the game as well. When we set out to do the sequel, we just wanted to even do better at capturing that active cinematic experience, which is really, for us, capturing the, the, the charm and action and adventure and spirit of, of classic, you know, action adventure that we all love and making it interactive so that anything we could do to make that experience in the player's hands, we wanted to improve from the first game to the second. And I think that's why we get the effect of people not wanting to put the controller down. You know, they want to see what's going to happen next and they're emotionally invested in what the characters are doing.
He's got a really unique character in Nathan Drake, so we really wanted to delve deeper into the, the character, figure out what makes him tick, and expand the cast of characters to allow him to have a lot of uh, different individuals to uh, play off. Nate, this is Carl Schaefer. How are you feeling? I think within the video game landscape, he stands out. I mean, he's got a real relatable character. He's an everyman, he's fallible. Nate. No, Elena, I'm done. Now, come on, I'm through playing the hero. We knew that we wanted to expand on his character to explore flaws and conflicts without losing what we thought was at the heart of our story, which is humor and charm. Yeah, good luck, pal. I mean, that's almost impossible to... Oh, you did it. Nice. And, you know, there's even elements of romantic comedy, which I think is unusual in games. If it makes you feel any better, my relationship with Flynn is strictly professional. Really? Mostly professional. Oh. True character is defined by the choices a human being makes under pressure. So that's what we try to do with Nate, is throw something at him that just pushes him enough, right, up against the wall that forces him to kind of be cunning and skillful, and then thus become the hero in the story. And that becomes sort of the, the core of the story, is seeing, you know, when people put, are put in a crisis, their real character comes out. And then how the people he surrounds himself with, his friends and his colleagues, react to the same crises, and uh, what that says about his character. You know, we've got Sullivan and Elena and a new character, Flynn, who's a longtime partner and associate of his, and, and Chloe Fraser, who's his sort of new romantic interest. I'm sorry, do you have a plan to go along with that grenade? Yes, I do. And all these people sort of are satellites around him that reflect different aspects of his personality and pull him in different directions. And, and then we want to just see what happens when, when the shit hits the fan. We can't just leave him here to die. He is as good as dead already, and so are we if we don't go now. <sighs> then go. Yeah, nobody's stopping you. Uncharted has, has always been uh, grounded into reality, and we try to thread the fiction and, and reality. We try to push it as much as possible to, to the fantasy but it's still believable. We've always wanted this very lush and colorful world. We want just, just vibrancy in all of our textures, detail. It's just all about detail, detail, detail. Some of us actually been to the, the Gompas in Nepal and Tibet, and, and we look at the location and the culture and how rich the architecture is, and just how they've developed their culture and the colors and the design. And sometimes reality is better than almost anything you can create. The big picture and the details, you can't have one without the other. So we'll do a variety of different types of concept art. We'll start off with sort of the big production paintings that give you the breadth and scope of what the level's supposed to look like. And we'll do tons and tons and tons of pages of, you know, what do the pipes look like? What, is the, what does this look like? When we set out to figure out the stories, we know that we always want to base it on a real life historical mystery. Our catalyst for this story was a real-life story about Marco Polo, one of the first Westerners to, to travel to, to China as a, as a trader, as a, as a merchant. And the mystery surrounding his return home was what we used as our, as, our, as our launching point. Marco Polo leaves China with 600 passengers and 14 ships loaded down with treasure from Kublai Khan. And he lands in Persia a year and a half later with only one ship left and only 18 passengers. So, so somewhere out there, there were 13 ships loaded with the Emperor's treasure waiting to be found. Yeah, and that is what your client is after. And because we base a lot of our uh, historical backstory on facts, you feel all more grounded. Uh, the Chinamani Stone gave us a nice artifact, something meaty with a real historical context for Drake to pursue. So here we have this artifact that somehow ties into Shangri-La, and that was another grounding for us. A lot of people pay lip service to trying to tell a good story in a video game, but they don't really take the steps necessary to deliver on that promise. And our team really has embraced that challenge, and I think we're providing a level of character-driven plot that most games just uh, aren't capable of, of doing. And we combine that with a really rich gameplay experience that weaves that narrative into the game as you're playing it. And it's just that whole package that we're bringing is what I'm most proud of. But what is it they say? Fortune favors the bold. Right. Lucky me.
Find the remains of my expedition and you will have your proof. Tenzin will guide you. One of the advantages of uh, having actors who do both the voice and the physical performance on the stage is that you get this unique energy when actors interact with each other that you just don't get when you record everybody separately in a sound booth. Hello. Oh! Whew. So much for foreplay. We allow a certain degree of uh, improvisation among the actors. You know, we have the script. They're never necessarily set in stone. If we come up with something better on the day of the shoot, or if uh, one of our actors comes up with a funny ad lib that works, you know, we use it. And you, if you record everything beforehand with completely different people, you'll never get that. Great, right, I love that. The actors and the director, uh, the motion capture director, really kind of treat their sequences like like miniature plays, and they they block them as if you know they're performing in front of a live audience, you know, but because there is no real camera there, there's you know uh, virtual cameras all over the place. That old girl can hit harder than that. <laughs> We work from an outline that we create at the beginning of the project. We flesh out the script and we work on the scenes as we go. And then when we get into the studio, we have a rehearsal day with the actors. We revise the material together, we get it up on its feet, and we block it as if we were shooting film. Then the next day we get together and uh, shoot it for real with the full crew there and the mocap suits and everything. Um, and even then we revise them on, on its feet. So it's, it's a really different process that most video games use. We split the take. We split the take three ways, then you and I disappear together. There's been a lot of instances where you have studios who record the voices separately from the mocap, and the end result almost always looks, at best, looks like pantomime, and at worst, looks like people running around flailing their arms. Let's not forget who walked out on who. The nice thing about motion capture is, unlike a live action shoot, where you know, if one person is in one take but the other person isn't, you're kind of having to choose between one or the other. I can choose anybody's take from any performance at any time so that we can always get the best possible result. The reason we're actually trying to capture the audio on the stage is because that's basically when the actor's in the moment and they're giving their best performance and it just feels a lot better than when we ADR it. Often that feels, you know, kind of can. You are the reporter who has been biting at my heels. You better pray that he is not bluffing. When I really get involved is really on the day of mocap shooting. So uh, I'm there on the stage as we're recording the scenes, shooting the scenes with the actors, and I'm listening for continuity bet between takes. I'm listening for the right emotional tone between the actors. I'm listening for noise. I'm listening for all kinds of pollution uh, in the sound. And uh, we do a bunch of takes. I'm paying attention to it from the, sort of the, the holistic overview of uh, how the performance fits into the larger story, into the script as a whole. I'm listening for the writing, whether it's working, whether what's on the page is coming out on the stage. I place the cameras where I think I'm going to get the best, most effective performances out of everybody, best establishing shots, best close-ups. And when the scene calls for it, uh, especially in the more action-oriented scenes, we always try to add a, a bit of a, a handheld feel to the whole thing as well. Once uh, Josh has decided which takes and which masters and all the, the time codes of the motion capture that he's gonna order, I'll stitch it together. We, you know, he gives me the leeway to make the timing feel good. It feels energetic. Um, then I go through all of the takes that we've recorded on the stage, not just the ones that we've selected. I'll make my best cut out of all that dialogue. Now come on, I'm through playing the hero. Your adversary will not give up so easily. He will not stop until he possesses the thing he desires. The actors give us such great material on the stage, and we, when we come in, uh, we have to complete that performance and make these characters really alive and, and who they are. That usually starts off with looking at what the characters are touching and what prop manipulations and, and how they interact with each other. And, um, and then it goes all the way up to all the fine details of you know, how their fingers and hands are are held and what their faces, uh, the, the expressions and uh, and tone and emotion of their face. It's not just the lip sync. It's it's the it's the whole performance. It's what they're doing when they're not speaking as well. So when we get that that performance into our computers and we we can look at it from any direction, it's at 
that point, we need to set up our camera rigs. We need to you know, decide where our shots are going to be from, what's going to be a close-up, what's going to be a wide or medium shot, you know, what's going to have a wide angle or a long lens. You know. So we get, to, we get to start that once the performance is already in. Yeah, we, we like to do a lighting study, what we call a lighting study, and look at the action, look at the location, understand the story point, really look at the subtle, subtle motion, the interaction of the characters, try to pick you know, some real you know, hero frames, some, some key points, some key frames in that story point, you know, in those scenes, and really light those to really bring the action to life. We start to move lights around in real time in the game, so we can you know, grab a hold of the sunlight and move it around and, and see, oh yeah, that, that angle of lighting really works nice on the character and it, it really brings out the right emotion, you know, so we get the right angle, marry that with the right color, now we, we, we've got a compelling shot developing. My relationship with Flynn is strictly professional. Really? Mostly professional. Oh. Often for the sounds in Uncharted 2, we will um, go out and actually do field recording. We've done that with a lot of the environment stuff. Uh, we also, um, you know, uh, record a whole lot of Foley as well. So, uh, because we have all the characters that we have to cover and their, their movesets are really, uh, you know, pretty extensive. Well, since our goal is to make sure that this sort of cinematic experience that we're providing, both interactively and in terms of the, the, the pre-rendered cutscenes, is as seamless as possible, we wanted to make sure everything happened within the same, same rendering engine, which is our game rendering engine. It's awesome. I mean, it's just, it's amazing because, you know, you can play the game, segue right into the cinematic, use the game engine to light these cinematics, bring them to life, and just make it really, really immersive, you know, using the game engine. Just one goes into the other and out, and so continuity is just, it's just there. Because we have the, the, the same assets that you're looking at in game and in the movie, we get that seamless cinematic experience. It's, it's really, really unique. I suppose I should have quit while I was ahead. It's not just about the visceral thrill of what you're doing, it's about the emotional and the visceral thrill, and that's where having it be a character-driven story is so important. And it's great fun for the player to, to, to experience, and I, I look forward to it. It's, it's a lot of fun. The biggest challenge we got when we started was like animation. I mean, everybody's been raving about our animations on the first one. We've been pushing the boundaries even further, like on, on Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. And we're like, okay, that's great, but how are we gonna make that work online? I remember I got really excited uh, when I got on my monitor, like two drakes running around. I called everyone in the office, hey guys, come on, come on over. Let's, and like everybody like saw right away the potential. We were like, Okay, that's huge. We spent a lot of time working on our technology to just bring animations across the network so that you can see the other players at the same point you would see just like NPCs or enemies in the game. Now we have all the fluid animations, all the climbing, all the jumping, you know, all the special moves are all in the game, which is, which is really awesome. We really pushed the boundaries. We tried new things nobody tried before. Everything that we do in single player shows up in multiplayer. You can see player movement as detailed as possible, like you will see them if they were like next to you. So when we Try to work online, we also want to make sure the experience for the player would be just as simple as it is when you play single player. So you hit start, you start the game, you play. I can very quickly jump online, hit our matchmaking system. There's no waiting around, there's no nothing. I'm pushing a button, I'm in the game. I'm finding people of like skill, so it's you know, bouncing me up and down and putting me into the right level so I know that every game I play is gonna be fun. You know, I'm gonna be constantly challenged, but it's not gonna be too hard. Also, something that's very important is be able to play with your friends, and that's why we created our party system. 
if I have a bunch of friends online, I can very easily invite them to join my party. I can see them in their party, uh, jump in with them with one button press. So that if you go and make a custom game, they're gonna play that custom game with you. If you go in matchmaking, they're gonna come and, and be in your team and just and follow you in your matchmaking. So that's that that's key because a lot of people want to play with their friends too. Their friends too. It's just it's super important like to be able just to chat with your friends and make fun of them sometimes if they die and stuff like that. We made it like really extremely easy. So uh, I'm sure people are gonna use that feature a lot. In the cinema mode, we record the games that you've played. So you can go back and watch games that you've played before and see you know, what exactly you did the last game you played. We save your games when you play them. You can replay them. Uh, just fast forward, pause the game, uh, stop, freeze everything, move the camera around and just look at what's going on, where, where everybody is. And uh, you can take screenshots and so that you can then show off to your friends. And also you can use it to see how other players are playing. So when a guy was really good in the other team or, or in your team, you can just replay the file and just follow him and see how he did it. What was his like tactic like, just to, to be so good? What, what is he doing? Because everybody has a unique technique. Even if you're playing by yourself, you're gonna call your, fr your wife over, your kids, your friends in the house and say, look at this, look at this awesome thing that happened and sort of gets more people involved. You know, you can go through and sort of give yourself a best of reel, which is really, really neat. The great thing about the PlayStation 3 that I love is the fact that there's a hard drive and that's uh, on every single machine and that's like priceless for us. So cinema mode like, uh, was very easy because we can save your cinema files to your hard drive very easily. And also uh, we are having some technology uh, using the cloud uh, where we can like save the files, uh, your cinema files to the cloud. So that when you want to share it with your friends, your friends will be able just to get it from the cloud and download it to their own PS3, to their hard drive. Ultimately, statistics are sort of the, the rawest form the game takes. So as a designer um, and as a player, it's important that we're able to see those things so we know where the game is unbalanced. Uh, I would never be able to make the game fair if I couldn't tell what the statistics were for any given map in any given mode. We have to be creative because PSN is free and I love that. It's, it, it's the fact like people can just play online games for free at any time and that's huge. And it's it's good because it like it forced us just to find new ways to store that data. And that's why we started to work on the other uh, cloud technology. Things that I thought were cool maybe didn't work. Maybe there was too many deaths there. Maybe there was no maybe nobody ever went there. Uh, those kind of things were very, very easy for me to see because we did track so many statistics all the way along. The stats are like the the, the biggest thing for, for the players. They want like to to know how they're doing. We have competitions going on and they want to be able just to go on the website and just look at the results of the game and take the result of the game and be able just to define who who's winning the tournament. One of the best features of Uncharted 2 is the uh, ability for us to live update the game, which means we don't have to patch. Uh, it's completely transparent to the player. Every time you start the game, you go on multiplayer, here at the bottom, we're gonna just you're gonna connect to our servers and you're gonna sync the latest data. And it's completely transparent, it takes no time. So that if we see there's a big advantage point on the map that we need to fix, we can do that. We can do that without people knowing about it. And it's good because it makes the experience better for everyone. It, the game has to be fair and that's very important. If we wanna update models in the game, uh, it's very, very easy for us to do that. If we wanna update game modes or even just tweaking numbers uh, having to do with the explosive damage, let's say, or the, the damage of the guns, if we find that something's overpowered or in the wrong place even, we can update all those things. We want to be able just to, be able just to keep pushing new things to the players uh, even after we ship. And uh, that was a, a big part of our, our technology too. And we're using the cloud for that too, where we store all our files just that you need to update on the cloud. And uh, again, it's all free and it's all good. <laughs> wow.
welcome to Naughty Dog. Hey, how are you? It's a good job. You know, they use the word family a lot here. It's like family, you know, uh, dysfunctional. Yeah, it's fun. It's like having brothers in a weird way, like really gross <laughs> brothers you don't like. <laughs> um, I hate them all. It's like having a bunch of uh, brothers and sisters around. Now it's like I've worked here long enough that I've gotten to know you guys. Like you know, like my brothers, like that dude over there. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's a nice little kind of marriage, so to speak. And the people are really great to work with. Uh, it's a nice atmosphere. We hate each other sometimes. We love each other sometimes. But I've found a happy place here. I've never had this intimate of a relationship with my coworkers in the sense that um, if you have a problem with someone, it's almost like you're dating them. You go outside and you'd be like, you know, I don't really appreciate the way you were talking to me that one day. We, we have a lover's quarrels often. We hold yeah. hands a lot. Yeah. You come into the office, you yeah. bring me breakfast. Camera is like, yeah, kind of does censor us a little bit. It's unfortunate. I can throw things at Marianne, so we're good. We're a good team. It's good being a game designer at Naughty Dog. We have a lot of fun. Know thy player, know thyself. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just like home. It's just like home. Oh. One of the things that appeals to me about working here is the collaborative environment. I mean, the way it affects the work is that pretty much anybody can say anything at any time. We are a kind of company, and as much as pretty much everyone here is a game designer. Uh, everyone here is a game designer, but everyone at the company is encouraged to um, have input into the process of creating this game. It's really collaborative. I mean, everyone just kind of works together and bounces ideas off of each other and stuff like that. Yeah, it's from the president on down. You can go to anybody and say, hey, how are we going to do this? How is this going to work? I can't tell you how many times I'll be sitting here and then hear somebody have a conversation over there and go, oh, wait, I know how to solve that problem. Or I'll be talking to somebody and somebody else will say, hey, wait, you're doing this wrong. I know exactly what you should be doing. I just go to talk to anybody like, hey, man, um, I need some help with this. You know, you're the, you're this guy, you're the lighting guy. You know, can you, can you help with this? It's cool because you can just pop your head up over a pod and say, hey, Tate, come here, and he'll come help you. Everyone's so proactive. Everyone's constantly coming over to you and, and asking questions and suggesting things, and you're going over to them. Because of the communication, not only does it make us all like work together better, but it, it solves so many issues that if we were in separate offices or separate pods, we'd never know what the other person was working on or what they're doing. If something sucks about your level, guarantee you, you will have a dozen people in your face that day saying, so do you have a plan to make this awesome? You're gonna have like six people on you in an hour telling you why this sucks and why you have to change it. And it won't be just programmers or designers, it'll be artists, it'll be testers, it'll be like, everybody so that's one of the reasons we end up with better games there's no such thing as as you know straight just really dark criticism it's just people trying to help you build upon what your initial idea is we'll just iterate on it change it around uh and make it fun to play you know i mean that's what we're doing here we're trying to make games that are fun to play you're constantly running around talking to some awesome animator some amazing visual effects artist you know and uh and then coming back to your desk and working in the tools and like putting it together yourself with your own hands you know and that's just amazingly satisfying <laughs> 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 It's a privilege and a pleasure to work with everybody here because they're, you know, respected in their fields. They're very good at what they do. Everybody here has three things in common. Talent, determination, and passion. Naughty Dog is just made up of many, many extremely creative people who are, I think most importantly, really concerned about getting their own work looking as best as it can. We recognize everybody's strengths and we leverage everybody's strengths. They've collected a bunch of people that are, you know, really competent and really good at what they do, and they, as much as possible, try and stay out of their way and let them do what they do. I haven't met a single person at this company who doesn't know what they're doing. When I found out that I got my job at Naughty Dog, I just, I freaked out. I called everybody, I screamed, I jumped around, I danced. It's really hard to get a job here, so, once I was able to get a job here, I was like, yes, finally. <laughs> There's a lot of egos too, just like any place, and there's a lot of talented people, and so that's going to mean a lot of egos, and you, I think everyone has a mutual respect. Last game, our level of cinematics were here, pretty, you know, pretty high, I think, and then I think this game, our cinematic level is going to be up here. Camera can't get that high. We have an awesome programming team uh, who gives us the tools that allows us as artists to take our creativity as far as it can go. They're not... 
they're not completely focused exclusively on the technical implementation. They want to know why they're doing it, they want to know how it's going to make the game better and how it's going to be awesome. To be able to do multiplayer came about from people experimenting with technologies themselves in their own time and then it was like, oh, we can use this. Programmers know it, they're designers. They, they, don't, they don't need that from us, which is amazing, it's incredible. And it also makes us feel like frauds. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's different from a lot of places. There's not a whole lot of structure here. There's not a whole lot of hierarchy. We really try to break down the hierarchy so there's not all these kind of levels of like, oh, well, he's somebody, so he can't see this and da-da-da-da. You want to just go directly to the person who knows what they're doing, so you don't have to go up the hierarchy and down again. You just go straight there and get it done and get it fixed much faster because of that. All of them do work. No one's a suit here, so so you respect them because they, they know what they're talking about. People who tell us what to do are the people who are actually creating the game themselves, so it's, it's good because they know, they know what they need. It's run by artists and, and programmers and um, people that, that care about what they're doing, um, and there's not a lot of bureaucracy. There's no meetings, it's just, if you need something, you go get the designer and say, hey, here's what I'm working on, uh, does this work for you? And they say yes or no, and they give you feedback and you change it, and that's it. We have no producers. That really gives me a lot of freedom, also a lot of responsibility. I'm really in charge of you know my own stuff, and uh, when it <laughs> when shit doesn't go right, you know they're on my tail about it. It's like this organic thing that sort of grows in every direction by itself, and every once in a while the hand of God comes down, slaps it back, <laughs> and, uh, and that's kind of how we do it here, which is cool. My favorite days are like Mondays and Tuesdays because Mondays I've got yoga at lunch, and uh, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays we play basketball. A lot of us go to the gym, basketball. We're gonna be playing basketball in 20 minutes. We get free lunch on Wednesdays, <laughs> breakfast and cereal and coffee, and and we're in the heart of Santa Monica. This is my naughty dog. His name is Jack, and we'll bring him in every once in a while. And then suddenly your toe was being licked, and it was a little bit. You know, a little bit scary sometimes because I thought Ryan was under the desk. It's nice. It makes it feel like home. I mean, we have a little trumpet running around. It's like, hi, trumpet. Just can't feed her too much. And she'll get that. Dude, how's that? I'm like, it's awesome. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be awesome. It's an awesome thing. It's been awesome. It was awesome. It's awesome. Awesome. Working here is just awesome. It's pretty awesome. Make it even more awesome. And you're like, okay, we're on the same wavelength. Make it awesome. Make it awesome. Good. And then you come back like a day later, and it's there, and it's awesome. <laughs> awesome, really? That's the word they use. Man, uh, we thought the designers were had a better like vocabulary than we did, but apparently not. Yeah, but I've been saying the same thing over and over again. It's like we're here to do one thing, and that's make a great game. It's really about having passion for what you're doing and want to see it through. And that's, I mean, really the through line for the last ten years that I've been here. And I think. I think we'll continue to be. That's the only way we can get the perfection and the quality that we get. Of the 13 years I've been here, it's probably the strongest Naughty Dog it's ever been. You know, definitely. <laughs> Put it against your head, like Michael Jordan. Let me start that again. Out of my craziest imagination, I can't imagine using yak crap in poo patties on your wall. The reality is I just hit the table with my head and <laughs> every pixel's a photon and you start to feel the game and live the game next thing you know you're inside the game but you know Hong's not telling you that he takes uh, amazing pictures of beautiful women in his spare time <laughs> yeah well payback's a bitch <laughs> oh crap I'm last year's model <laughs> where there's golds there's guns <laughs> what was the question? and working with him let me try again <laughs> Uh, cut. <laughs> Late at night, we, uh, you know, we used it. <laughs> it was good, you just called yourself a designer. Yeah. <laughs> you can cut that, right? <laughs> you should really do real world style. Like, do you guys you bleep, like, would you guys just bleep, bleep stuff out? Would you still use the footage, but <laughs> you just <laughs> bleep that shit out. Right there? <laughs>
And so we could really, really attack the hardware this time around. And we saw a huge target in uh, helping out the, the graphics chip by offloading some of the work to the SPUs. And uh, when we started doing that, we realized that the SPU is really, really good at doing this kind of work. We added more functionality to it so that it all could be done on the SPUs and really, really efficiently and with much higher quality than before. Our characters, uh, they typically have 80,000 uh, polygons in, in you know, one character, like the main character. In total, what, you, what we try to push through to, to, the, to the graphics chip is about 1.2 million uh, triangles that we try to, to, to draw every frame. We do a lot using the cell processor. We uh, make heavy use of uh, assembly programming, which is really nitty-gritty uh, programming. Uncharted has uh, animation blending uh, as a core feature of our technology, a core feature of, of how our characters move, and it's, it's incredibly unique to the way we're approaching the problem of producing a really high-quality animation. We can have animations that range anywhere from just a couple of animations to up to 20, 30 animations at one time affecting a character affecting them in various parts like hands, face, shoulders, back, and, and, and legs. You don't have to have an animator animate every single um, possible combination uh, of the player putting away his weapon while jumping or, or running and shooting or all these different things. Really, no animator can animate enough animations to produce the same look that we've been able to do by mixing and matching, by layering animations on top of each other, by blending between animations even on different layers. And that really gives the player uh, a lot more control over what he wants to do that's not limited by our animators. We added more functionality to it so that, uh, for instance, the camera mo uh, motion blur, um, it all could be done on the SPUs and really, really efficiently and with much higher quality than before. So we added lots of things uh, on top of it, including uh, bloom and uh, downsampling, the focal blur. And the interesting thing about the focal blur is that we are actually being very accurate so that when you, when you fight with a char character, we can focus on what's happening clo in close combat. Whereas when you aim at someone far away, we can focus on what's happening far away and things that are near blur out. So it really guides your eye, um, maybe in the same way that, that your eyes focus on something in the distance or close. You know, now that we don't have to do uh, the post effects using the graphics chip, that means that the graphics chip can do more, which means that it, we can render more polygons and have more interesting uh, background. So um, all in all, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge benefit for the graphics. We really wanted to push the PS3, which we knew we could push even further uh, from what we had done with the first game. And we went from 150 objects for the first game. This game, we're capable of over 500 objects uh, in, in like just a couple of milliseconds. And that has allowed us to make the world come to life, to really feel real, feel like you're not in this like frozen wasteland, but really that you're in a building that's being destroyed, that you're in a war zone with everything going on around you, that things are more real than they ever have been before. And it shows, given the, uh, the SPUs and, and just the harnessing the power of the PS3, we can now take it so much further. And uh, Uncharted 2, we've really taken it the next step. Because our game is, is very much a action movie, right? So you would expect to have it look sort of like a, like a movie. It's still stylized, but movie-like. And so, so we made a filmic filter for the, the high dynamic range, so we could play much more with the, with the light values. It looks much more believable, and, uh, and also it sort of solves a lot of the shadowing problems that, that you sort of expect to see. So it, it really puts everything together in a sort of a cohesive way. Uh, hard to do, but the benefits are huge because you can make real magic happen. Hey!
Is <laughs> chocolate? Like you get a new look for like. We hate management, we hate meetings, we don't like long emails. If you see something in the game that you want to fix, don't ask permission, just go in there and make it awesome. Yeah, people are asking us, like, what's your secret? <laughs> yeah, um, what are we all about? It's always sort of a corny answer, but it's, it's really the people. And, you know, we have really strict hiring practices. Every single discipline has uh, a test that we give people. And um, we have a very thorough interview process as well. And we really want to make sure that people you know, work with um, the way we like to work, which is everybody's got to be very self-motivated, self-starters. We don't have uh, very much management. We say like we don't hire people so they can work for us, but we hire people so they can we can work with them. We hired people yeah. because of their talent and their creativity, and we want people just to get in there and collaborate because that's where the the magic happens. Really, I mean, when you've got a programmer working with an animator or a modeler working with a texture artist, and they're sitting right next to each other and they're communicating on a daily basis. Like bureaucracy, bureaucracy, or hierarchy. hierarchy, all that stuff. That's just like this. This is not us, and uh, we are like just trying to be as plain as we can in terms of our organization, try to be efficient, go to the point, and get it done. It's like we trust everyone just to be on top of what they have to do. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, I think we're somewhat spoiled because, as we're saying, we yeah. have this amazing team, and we've got these people that we can trust, and they're going to do great work even if they are have very minimal direction. No. And that's the kind of people that we want to uh, bring into Naughty Dog. I mean, in the end, that environment can kind of be chaotic, but that's sort of what we all thrive in, that's and good. it's organized chaos, and sometimes not so organized no, chaos. Yeah, but, no. but in the end, uh, I know we've got the team that can pull off those ideas and just make the game even better so yeah, our yeah. team size is you yeah. know more than doubled in just the last probably three years yeah. and you know we're still trying to maintain that small game company feel we're trying to make sure that everybody feels like they've got uh, a say in the production and everybody's got a, a voice to be heard I feel like every single day I come to work I, I learn something you know I mean, I'm being pushed by my peers around me to um, you know keep up with the state of the art after shipping a game we like tell people, you know what, just go ahead. I mean, just try things out. We, you have no direction whatsoever. You have three months, do what, whatever you want to do. Actually, a lot of the greatest ideas that ended up in the game of Uncharted 2 came out of that period yeah. of time, that first three months between Uncharted 1 and, and when we fully hit production of Uncharted 2. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that period of time of just being able to be creative without restriction, I think really uh, helps the entire production process. We are very communicative with the game development community at large. Um, we talk to uh, other developers within Sony and even uh, other Constant. friends in the industry yeah. and just try to bounce ideas off them, see how they've got their studio set up. If we know great guys are making great games and we're gonna, we're gonna ask them if they want to come by at our studio and so they can check it out. We're like really, really open about what we do we're trying to share it with other developers within Sony, outside Sony. Now yeah. the teams are so big, the development process is so complicated. The challenges are so different. Uh, yeah. That just the having the idea is only the first step, and yeah. you've still got you know 99 more steps before you're actually going to be able to implement that idea. Evan comes from design, and he's still doing design work. I'm come from programming. I'm still doing programming work, and, and so everybody yeah. from top to bottom works on the game, actually has a task that they're producing work that's making the game better. Nobody's just managing a schedule or pushing papers. Um, we want the decision to be in the hands of the people that are doing the work. This is our first passion and we don't want to lose that. I think we will probably lose some of the energy that we have if we can spend some time doing what's our first passion. Some it works. Uh, and cross our fingers. Uh, but yeah, it works. Ha, ha, ha.
Sorry, fellas. This belongs to me. Smooth, Nate. Real smooth. <laughs> 